What's good guys, we're back at it again with another video. As you can see from the title today, we have the number five player in the class of 2023, Mackenzie Mbako. You know, I had to go look up how to pronounce his last name. You can't get that wrong. But with him, you know what I'm saying? We just recently did DJ's, you know, updated, uh, you know what I'm saying, breakdown. So I actually watched like the full games because I like to see, okay, how does his body language look? How does he look when his shot isn't falling? Things like that. So when I was watching DJ's, when I was watching that game, I was like, who is this one kid? Because they have this one really tall kid He's making a whole bunch of threes, contesting three, contested threes, putting it down a little bit. I'm like, who is this? Like, this kid is really nice. So I'm like, he got to be ranked, right? So all of a sudden, obviously, we're going through our 2023 class because I'm going to make the top 10 soon. But I want to get through more players than I did in 2022 so I can get a better feel for where players are. So all of a sudden, I'm checking our comments and I see someone commenting McKenzie. Obviously, I've never seen anything from him before. So I go look him up and I'm like, oh, that was him. So... He's ranked number five, so you know what I'm saying? I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I already know, since I watched that whole game, I already know what type of player this is. I already know the caliber player this is. So I'm not even gonna hold you guys up any longer. Let's go. McKenzie has no problem getting the rebound and pushing the ball up the floor. As you can see here, he shows great patience getting it up the court. And at six foot eight, he also has great agility, which allows him to make moves such as this. And he also has good touch, which allows him to finish. He's also a good three-point shooter who can hurt you in a plethora of different ways on the pick and pop if you aren't there and let him get a clean look. It's a bucket. And even in trail situations, if you don't stop the ball and stop him, he has no problem raising up and knocking him down. You also have to find him in transition because he's always running the wing, spotting up and looking to let it fly. Though he doesn't put it down for drives often, he's still 6'8 and a good athlete, so he can easily finish at the rim. When he does put the ball down, most of the time he's trying to get to a jumper, but as you can see here at his height, not much is affecting the shot. This is the type of player that you have to know where he is at all times because if you give him a clean look from anywhere on the court, it's a bucket. Teaching point for all players, if you see two people on you at any point in time, get rid of the ball. McKenzie's jumper is so effective not only because of his size, but also because of his quick release. As you can see here, it doesn't take him long at all to get the shot off, even with a great contest coming out at him. And as you're going to see on this next possession, again, if you leave this dude any space at all, you already know what it is. This is just a great example of McKenzie's touch. Even with Jalen Duran guarding him, he has no problem getting the shot up and over. He's a legitimate threat in pick and pop situations, and even DJ Wagner knows it's in before it's gone. For all my guards or players that consistently drive to the rim as a shot blocker, what we want you to do is try and extend the ball out and get it away from your body. Go through the big to finish at the rim. As I said before, McKenzie often gets it off the glass and brings it up the court. You have to stop him early after he crosses half court because even with seven foot one Derek Lively on him, it's still a bucket. He doesn't put it down too often, but when he does, he's trying to create space. And if he gets that space, bottoms. He is prone to tunnel vision at times. I froze it here so you guys can see. Like I said earlier, when you see two or three bodies in front of you, you do have other teammates open. In McKenzie's case, he has an open teammate on the wing or in the opposite corner, but he still takes the tough fadeaway. And at this point in his career, he does have a hard time reading when the double team is coming. I froze it here as well so you guys can see he does have an open teammate on the opposite wing and at the top of the key, but he still takes the tough runner in the lane. One more time, pick and pop. You give him any type of room. Okay, so McKenzie, before we get into it, I do have to say this. Him, as well as a, a couple of other players, are like the epitome of why I love that I do the breakdowns for high school basketball. Because for my entire college career, I was completely detached from high school basketball at all. Like, I didn't, I wasn't watching highlights. I wasn't watching mixtapes. Like, I didn't know who was coming up unless you were a big name. Jalen Green, Cade, players like that, Evan Mobley. Like, if you weren't top three, top five, I don't really know who you are. Like, I didn't know how you played. I would just see you literally when you got to college and I'm playing against you and you're on our scouting report and we're watching you and you're watching, we're watching you like your clips like two days before our game. Like that's, that's how I would know like how good a player would be, right? So now to be able to jump back into it like I was when I was younger on home team hoops and I basically knew everybody who was anybody in basketball. Now it's just good to see, you know, this caliber of player this early, but let's jump into McKenzie, right? First, obviously, as you can see from these highlights, you know, it's easy to see his bread and butter. This dude can shoot the ball and he loves to shoot the ball and he doesn't need any type of space to shoot the ball. So obviously we are going to make this a little bit more detailed. So let's get into the stats. Right. So he actually shot 38 percent from three for the entire EYBL season. He shot 43 from the field, but he out of his 161 field goal attempts, 71, 74 percent were three. So this dude is a 
his bread and butter, like I just said, is he's a three-point shooter. He likes to shoot it. He likes to get up shots, things like that. But let's jump into his game. So as you saw, this dude is, for right now, especially right now and how his coach uses him in AAU, walk and mismatch, right? So in AAU, it looks like they have him at the four. When he is in the game, he does get to get to the three sometimes because he probably is at the next level and on. He's going to be a three. But in AAU, they use him at the four sometimes. I want to give you guys some insight into why he's so effective into that pick and pop. So for him, because he is still athletic, he's six seven, six eight, but he's athletic, he's mobile. As a big, when he you put him at the four, you know, okay, the person I'm guarding, he's probably quicker than me, he's probably faster than me. So when we get into pick and pop and I have to hedge, when I have to recover back, I'm not gonna go press up on him because he's gonna go right by me. So when I recover back off that pick and roll, I'm gonna back up a little bit just in case he decides to drive. But with him, he knows that, he understands this, and his shot is so fast, he's getting it up before you. Like the second you decide, okay, I'm not gonna run right at him, it's gone, it's gone. And he's knocking it down. Like you saw in that first game, he probably hit maybe four or five, maybe even six threes. And like they keep getting it because as a big, it's extremely hard, especially if there's a big that like can, or a big or a mismatch uh, wing who can make threes like that. If your coach isn't telling you to squeeze that ball screen and stay with him, like he's gonna get a good shot every time. Trust me, I know. If you go back in my uh, in some of my tips and tricks videos, there's videos of that exact thing happening to me with a quicker player and me trying to run back, me trying to you know give him a little space and all of a sudden it's gone and he tied the game with five seconds left. So trust me, I know all about that. But for him, in terms of him putting the ball down on the ground, he can do that. Like you saw, he did it that one time he gets the and one. So he does have enough of a handle to put it down a little bit. As you saw, he does also bring it up in transition. But when he does dribble, most of the time he's trying to get to a spot. Like as you saw, Takes the one dribble left, he gets back right, he's trying to get to a spot, raise up. Or, or you know what I'm saying, he's just dribbling, in and out, he's trying to create that space, gone, it's a three, it's knockdown. If you give him any type of space, when he does start to dribble, when he does try and get to that spot, at six, eight, bro, you're not really contesting it, he's really just missing at that point, or it's going in. And for him, like I just said, he brings the ball up in transition. This is one of those players, like, you have to stop. You have to stop as he, as, after he uh, crosses half, because even with Derek Lively on him, who's seven foot with, I know he has probably like a seven two, seven three, seven four wingspan, because of how fast the shot is, he still got it off on him. And this dude has touch. He has Jalen Duran guarding him. He's making runners, leaners over Jalen Duran, making it dang to touch the roof, come down, bucket. So like this dude is a shooter that's his bread and butter that's gonna uh, translate to the next level. He probably definitely, when he gets to college, obviously they're going to develop that other part of his game. It's going to be real spooky, especially if he's playing up in 17U right now with DJ and putting up numbers like he's putting up and scoring that easily. Like it's going to be real spooky, especially as his game evolves and he gets to the next level, gets to a, a coach that allows him to run off pin downs, flares, things like that. Not really put him too much in pick and roll situations because he had, what? 12 assists, 20 uh, turnovers over the AAU season. So it's obviously not a, he's obviously not a passer, but what he's gonna do is this dude is going to shoot the cover off the ball consistently. You give him any room, it's a bucket. Like this dude is like that. Now in terms of the rankings, he's, like I said, we aren't, we're gonna come with them soon, but I also still wanna wait till we get into a high school season because uh, as there is every single year, there's gonna be an unknown player that shoots through the rankings from junior to senior year. In my year it was Colin Sexton. Uh, recently it was what? I don't even remember who it was recently, but as of late, but it, it happens every single year. There's a player always, it was a uh, Shaden, Shaden Sharp. Like, so for every single year, there's a player who comes out of nowhere, unranked junior year, senior year, and they shoot up the rankings and they're usually gonna to be top 10, top 15. So I'm really interested to see who that is, but all in all, Top five, he definitely deserves that. This dude is like that. We still got to hit Bay Fall, Javante, who's in that top 10 on Monday, though. We are coming with Mikey's. We got to redo Mikey's because he did just play Montverde. I watched that game. He wasn't looking too hot, but there's another game that I found that we are going to watch so I can see, okay, has he taken any steps in his game, things like that. So I know you guys are excited for that. I'm excited for it, too. Like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. If you want one-on-one -on -one advising and instruction, and if you also want a subscriber breakdown on the channel, hit my website. If you want to go see my story times, you know, exclusive recruiting tips, things like that, hit my Patreon. Appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you next time with the next video.